morning, hallelujah, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord, hallelujah. Come on and bless the name of the Lord, the name of the Most High, hallelujah, hallelujah. We come to give him praise, hallelujah. We come to worship him, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God we serve, don't you know the angels bow before heaven and earth, what a mighty God, what a mighty God, what a mighty God we serve, what a mighty God another day lord god and to be able to be in your presence lord god one more time lord god free from all restraints lord god lord we ask that as we move into this service lord god that you move in front of us lord god and that you move with us lord god that you just have your way in this service lord god every need lord god that it that you meet it on today, Lord God. Everything that our hearts are desiring, Lord God, Lord, that you bring into fruition, Lord God. Lord, and that you give us a word, Lord God, using the man of God that you have appointed, Lord God, to meet what we need, Lord God, to tell us exactly what is needed to hear, Lord. Not just what we want to hear, but what is needed from you, Lord God. Lord, we ask that you just have your way in this service, Lord God, and have your way in our lives, Lord God, whether we're physically here Lord God or online Lord we ask that you just move by your spirit and power Lord God and have your way Lord God have your way oh Lord have your way on today Lord God Lord we are so thankful Lord God we are so grateful Lord God to be in your presence Lord God and to lift your name up one more time Lord and it is in Jesus name we pray amen amen and amen hallelujah Hallelujah. Is anybody grateful, Lord? Hallelujah. Grateful for the Lord thy God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We are so thankful, Lord. So thankful for your presence, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. We worship you, O King. to cry out to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Lord, we love you. A broken spirit. 
so broken spirit and a contrite heart Lord I'm simply just a broken spirit oh God and we come before you Lord to heal our hearts for you are the healer of a broken spirit Lord Worship the name of the Lord. He is a healer. He is a way maker. He is a provider. He is a protector. Hallelujah. Lord, you're worthy, Jesus. You're so worthy, oh God. We cry out on today. We cry out holy. We cry out one.
the glory. Tell your neighbor, I know he will. Tell him, I know he will. to do just what we need him to do even on a Sunday morning right here at the end of November. Anybody blessed on today? Anybody better than blessed on this morning? Hallelujah. Amen. At this time we're going to prepare to receive our offering. Amen. For those that are giving online, of course, you will see before you on the screen is the cash app for NDCC Hinesville. Amen. Cash app dollar sign NDCC Hinesville or online you'll see NBCCHinesville.org. But in the house, we have ushers that are in the back that are ready. If you would just lift your hands, they will come to you and receive your offering. We know that it is better to give than it is to receive. And this is where we have an opportunity to sow seed back into the kingdom as we celebrate on this past Thursday our Thanksgiving giving thanks unto God for so many blessings that he has bestowed upon us. And we just know as we speak and we sing, we'll shout how blessed we are. Amen. And we need to share the blessing and let God know through our giving, through our seed sowing, amen, that we are thankful and that we are grateful for what he is doing in our lives. Some of us have had cars, and then we got another car, and then we got another car, and got another car. <laughs> after car, after car. And God just keeps on blessing and making ways out of no ways. Keep a roof over the head. Travel back and forth over the dangerous highways and God keeps us. And we are just thankful on today. So we thank you for your giving again. If you would lift your hands, amen, the ushers will come to you. We thank you for the seeds that are being sown online by those that are being blessed by this ministry. Let us go before the Lord with a word of prayer. Father, we thank you for this offering that we have received on today. Those that are giving, wherever they may be, Lord God, bless their hands. Bless, Lord God, the fruit of their labor. Bless every, that everything that they put their hands to do, that it would prosper, Lord God, according to your will and according to your word, Lord God. Bless your people in a mighty way and continue to do great works and great things in their lives. And we give you thanks for this offering that we've received on today. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on and give God another hand clap of praise. We thank God, amen, for these worship leaders, these musicians that are behind me, amen, beside me, amen, and on the second row. We thank God for all our musicians. <laughs> we thank God for all of them, amen. It's good to be back in God's house once again. I got a chance, had the opportunity uh, to watch the service on last Sunday. I was in Alabama, and uh, we're an hour ahead, I think it is, so we're earlier. However it is, we were in a different time zone. And I was able to watch this service prior to going to the service there in Alabama. And uh, got a chance to listen to the praise team and listen to uh, Minister Reynolds, and she did a beautiful job. Amen. On that Sunday morning. I'm not going to pick on her today, but I think she got her hair do did just for that service so she could preach on Sunday morning. <laughs> we thank God for her and the word that was message that was given on last Sunday. Amen. And if I'm correct, it was dealing with the enemy within. Dealing with the enemy. That's powerful, y'all. That's, that's powerful. Amen. Because that enemy is one of our biggest this deal with what's on the inside of us that nobody else sees, nobody else has to deal with but us. Amen. That is your battle. Amen. We thank God for her. Thank God for the word. And thank God for each and every one of you. Um, we're going to jump back into a series. Amen. I was thinking, how can I flow into what God has given us on today? And I said I was going to put my musicians to work. Amen. And didn't want to sing, Brother Warren. Brother Warren didn't, didn't want to sing. Amen. And this ain't a shouting message, so, so I don't know if they're going to get vacation today or how we going to do. How we going to do. So we going to work. We just going to go to work and let God do what he does. Amen. Is that all right? So we've been talking. We've been talking the last uh, majority of this month. We've been talking about Rome folks business 
grown folks' business. Within the kingdom, we mature. We, are, we mature, amen, in our relationship with God and our walk with God. And that maturity comes with responsibility and with wisdom. And, amen, there is a standard in the kingdom. And sometimes we forget, just like in our own lives, we forget that as we grow older and more mature, there's just some things that we've got to be aware of and we just cannot do. We have a responsibility as parents to teach our children. We'll tell them, you're too old for that now. You, you're too old. You, you, all right now, you can't, you can't sit and eat at the dinner table and all your food is down the front of your face and all over your mouth and all over the table. Now, you're too old for that, son. You know, we'll tell them it's, we've got some maturing to do. We've got some growing to do. We can't just run around and not do anything and not be accountable and not be responsible for our actions. We'll tell them, okay, you're a little older now. There are some things that you've got to handle differently. There are some things that you've got to be able to see, be aware of, and allow, amen, the wisdom and the maturity of your relationship with God, my brothers and sisters, to allow that to help us to be what God has called for us to be as we mature and we grow. Yeah. The Bible tells us that when we're a child, we talk like a child, thought like a child, and reason like a child. But when we became a man, I did away with childish things. So this morning... We've talked about uh, encouragement and loving and repentance. Today, we want to talk about forgiveness. Somebody shout forgiveness. <laughs> forgiveness, was said, is the fragrance that the violet sheds on the heel that has crushed it. Let me say that again. It said that forgiveness is the fragrance that is released. When the violet has that sheds, it, it, it sheds on the heel that has crushed it. This was, statement was given by Mark Twain that even as the flower is being crushed, the beauty of it is being crushed, there is a fragrance, a beautiful fragrance that is released at the heel that has crushed it. Forgiveness is uh, to stop feeling anger towards towards someone or uh, something that has been done wrong or to stop blaming someone. This is forgiveness. Number two is to stop feeling anger about, to forgive one, someone for something that has been done that is wrong. Forgiveness is to stop requiring payment of money that is owed. Forgiveness, amen, is releasing the anger towards or the blaming or the feelings of anger towards someone that has done us wrong. That is no doubt. The wrong has been done. But forgiveness is releasing yourself of, of that anger. Amen. Have you ever had trouble forgiving somebody? You don't have to answer that. You don't have to. Because if you've lived long enough, Amen. Sometimes people can cut and hurt you so deeply that 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 you have trouble forgiving them. It 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 and then sometimes it'll seem like, oh, I forgive them, I forgive them. We'll give it a real good lip service. And just as soon as we see them, you're like, mm. you know, we saw something in our spirit that we just, you know, we just frown up a little bit, like, what's wrong with you? We don't even notice it sometimes. We look and somebody looking at you and see. You know, your continence has changed. Amen. That's how forgiveness, we're dealing with forgiveness, that, that, that offense can trouble us so much so. Amen. And we'll wrestle sometime with having to, with forgiving those that have offended us. And sometimes, saints of God, we'll wrestle with forgiving someone of, of stuff that they don't even know that they've offended us things that they've offended us and we didn't they don't even know they don't even have a clue that they've offended you and we'll wrestle with forgiving them over something that they are clueless about unforgiveness can be a disease that destroys you from the inside it eats away and consumes your peace and your joy but love somebody shout but love but love forgives 
This is the basis of our walk with God, that God so loved the world. Love forgives. If we allow God to work on the inside of us, he can fill us with a love that can cover a multitude of sin or offenses against us. And we can show this love to one another, including those that have done us wrong. Uh, it would be good to be in a place. Can you imagine being in a place? Because some of us, we'll just be honest, we're not there. But to be in a place where even folks that have offended us, we can forgive them and show them a, the same consistency of love as if they've never offended us in the first place. Uh, yeah, we talk, we'll talk it, and we'll look it, and we'll, we'll act like it. But when we get home, there's some issues on my mind. What's wrong with y'all? It just don't, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. That's what we'll tell folks. It ain't, it ain't nothing. But really, it is something. It's that unforgiveness that's eating us up from the inside out. This is grown folks' business. We've got to get to a place where we can mature and God so much so, amen, that we can love others through even through the offenses that have gone before us. We can stay, you can put yourself in a position where you never forget your daddy and you never, you never forgive your father or you never forgive your mother and you'll never forget, well, they did this and they did that and it will hinder us all of our life if you don't learn how to forgive. Romans 12, 17 says, repay no one evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all and most of all in the sight of God. Uh, the Proverbs tells us that a soft answer turns away wrath, but harsh words stirs up anger. It says that if thy brother trespass against thee, rebuke him. And if he repent, if your brother sins, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him, yeah. forgive him. Yeah, that's that's it's and it's easy. It's easy. What well, it's easy for you to say that, Pastor B, man. But you don't know what he did. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's, it doesn't matter because it isn't for them and what they did. It's for you and you to be able to live in love. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. I mean, because it will eat you from the end side out and now you've got anxiety and now you're stressed out and now you've got issues and now you've got things that are going on in your head and and you can't have a relationship with this one because they remind you of that when you've got issues with, and, and all of this is going on because we never were able to forgive Bible tells us above all things have fervent love for one another for love will cover a multitude of sin. Nudge your neighbor, tell them this grown folks business. Grown folks business. There is no lack in the Bible where we are not instructed to, for us to learn or for us to display a lifestyle where we are able and capable of forgiving one another. That we're capable to forgive. God loved us so much so that it didn't matter how much dirt we did, no matter how much you had, how much junk we had, or baggage that we brought in. Amen. When we come into the kingdom of God, He forgives us of all of our sins. And He forgives us for all of the mess and all the junk that we may have done in our past. He says, Your slate has been wiped clean. He washes us from the crown of our head to the sole of our feet of things we can't imagine. We didn't even want to tell anybody about afraid of what people would think but God knows and he forgave you and now you have others that will come and they may offend you with lesser offenses and yet and still we choose not to forgive we choose we will make a choice we will say I can't forgive them can't forgive them. Nah, not for that. That was my cousin you did that too. That was my mama you did that too. That was my brother you did that too. And because of that, I can't forgive you. And we are not in the right, saints of God. We're in the wrong. It might be tight, but it's sure enough right. <laughs> the Bible talks to us in St. Luke 
about the prodigal son. One of the most profound uh, examples of forgiveness and how this father, he had two sons and the youngest begged that he would give him his inheritance. He wanted it early. He wanted his stuff and he wanted it now. So the father chose to give him what was rightfully his, but soon that son left his father, went to a far away country, spent all of his inheritance foolishly with sinful living. Isn't it just amazing how in the Bible days they still doing that 2021? Folk just want to get there, there at the first opportunity. They will tell you, I'm out of here. I'm going to do my thing. I've got to do me. I got to do me. Mama, daddy, thank you for raising me. I appreciate you for what you put in me. But I got to go live this life for myself. And they will leave or they will leave hastily, amen, to go and do their own thing and find themselves in a world of hurt. I will, if, if you don't listen to anything else, know, amen, that this world, there is nothing good in this world, amen, when it comes to you and your relationship with God. The enemy's desire is to steal, amen, snatching away something that's not his, amen, to kill, amen, to, to utterly destroy you, amen, is to steal, kill, amen, and to destroy us. It's his desire. It's his plan. It's what he desires do, to do. Amen? amen? So this uh, prodigal son leaves and goes and he spends all his money and finds himself in a land. The land comes into famine. Amen. And this son becomes in dire need. He begins working in fields and is hungry and is eating with pigs and then and, and begin to look amen. And this, this lifestyle begins to look good to him because amen, it's the best that he can do. But he comes to his senses realizes this this is where we we mess up sometimes saints of God when it comes to forgiveness amen is that we forget that there is something the same way that God changed your life God has the same power to transform somebody else's life amen and the same thing that you're holding over their head God has already forgiven them of so who are we to hold this against them? This does not mean that you allow people to use you and to abuse you and to take advantage of you. But it does mean that you should forgive and give them an opportunity to walk in a lifestyle that's holy and acceptable unto the Lord. When he came to his senses didn't isn't this what happened to us that we came to our senses and we realized that there was something better than these streets we realized that there was something better than running from woman to woman and man to man and living a lifestyle where our only desire and hustle was to get money and spend money and do it all over again we came to our senses that there was a life that was better that would not only be where we could have heaven on earth, but we could have heaven when we went to heaven. <laughs> that we could live a lifestyle where we're not worrying and stressed and full of anxiety, where we could live a lifestyle that we can sleep at night, where we can be comforted by the Spirit of God, where we, the Bible reminds us that we are never alone, that he would always display or he would always allow his comforter to comfort us amen we can live a lifestyle that is able to keep us on track to doing and accomplishing the visions and the goals that God has for our life he came to his senses that he was living beneath himself yes. Yes, he was. prodigal son decides to go back home he humbles himself and is prepared Amen. To ask for forgiveness and, uh, and just to, to have a job as a servant. But he was not a servant. He was a son. I know this cancel culture tells us to just kick them to the curb. Just, just you know, leave them by the wayside. Just forget about them. You don't got to forgive them. Just forget about them. You don't have to deal with them no, no more. Amen. And we'll carry that hurt and that pain. And it just so happened we saw them in Walmart. You know you're going to see everybody at Walmart. You know. 
And we thought we canceled them out, amen, and, and, and we see them again. And now, amen, because we have not forgiven, we're all back in the same place where we're messed up all over again yeah. over something that happened 20 years ago that we never forgave. Come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, we can't hit the note and shout on this one. Somebody shout forgiveness. He came to his senses, went back home, he humbled himself, and he prepared to ask for forgiveness, amen, and even to just work as a servant. But And the Bible says that, and he arose and came to his father. But when his daddy saw him a long ways off, daddy saw him, and he, he saw him, he had compassion in his heart, ran and fell on his neck. Watch, this is the son that said, look, I don't care. You did all this for me. You raised me. You taught me the way. You showed me how to, to get in and out of stuff, how to do things. How you, you were there when I scraped my knee. You were there to help me along the way. You were there to pat me on my back. You taught me how to be a man. Forget all of that. I want my money and I'm leaving. Amen. This after all of this, what was his daddy thinking? How he turned his back on him, how he left him, amen, to go and do what he wanted to do in the world. He left him for a good time. But, but the Bible tells us that this father, huh, he showed compassion. He had already forgiven him. He said, and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight and am no longer worthy to be called your son. He knew how far he'd fallen off. Amen. And yet and still the father was there standing ready with compassion to receive him back in. The father said to his servants, bring out the robe. I told him, look, get out the road, get out some good clothes. I don't know what he wearing. I don't know why he wearing this old dirty, raggedy stuff. Go and get him the robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger. Put some sandals on my boy feet. He said, and bring the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this is my son who was dead and is alive again. He was not concerned about what he'd done or what he'd gone through and how much he had turned his back on him. How he had left him. Amen. How he had done him wrong. He didn't cut him off. He didn't stop him at the gate. Amen. He didn't talk about him. He didn't put him down he didn't make him apologize he told him to get my boy together because this is my son put, a, put some clothes on my boy make sure he look good he represents me he said bring this fatty calf I need to, we need to eat we need to be excited about this thing because my boy is back once again he was lost and now he is found and they all begin to be married amen when people see amen that you have forgiven amen they can grab a hold to that same type of forgiveness because now you become an example I know how he did you I know how he treated you I know what you've gone through but to see you now forgiving amen and blessed because of it it's a reason to give God some praise then ask questions then point fingers then remind his son of his sin amen but he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him Forgave, forgiveness can be a beautiful act of humility and of love amen Jesus speaks to us concerning forgiveness and says moreover if your brother sins against you go tell him his fault between you and him alone and if he hears you you have gained a brother amen it's not for everybody to know the business between you and your brother or you and your sister amen when you forgive you forgive you can forgive in silence you can forgive in love you can forgive and be on one accord amen this prodigal son came back and he received the blessings of his father because his father had forgiven him when you forgive it's easy to fellowship when, when you forgive, it's, it's easy to come in contact with it. When you forgive, it's easy to love. When you have forgiven. Uh, Peter came 
told Jesus, he said, Lord, how often should, I, should, I, uh, should my brother sin against me and I forgive him? He asked a question up to seven times, and Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. Everybody want to do the math and try to figure, well, what's seven? Let me take care of the one. Let me take this over to 70 times. So, no, it's not that you need to count the number of times I need to forgive Minister Reynolds. That's not, I don't need to count. Minister Reynolds, you, you on number 23. You on you on 23 now. I don't know how many times I could keep doing this with you on number 23 now. Please don't get number 24. I don't know how long. But I'm going to forgive you one more time. I'm going to forgive you. It's not for us to count how many times it is. What he is saying is for us that it is limitless to the number. Amen. It's not for you to keep track. Amen. It's for you. Your job is to forgive. Offenses are going to come. Amen. You're going, amen. There's going to be times that people are going to offend us, that are going to do us wrong. There are going, we're going to be hurt. We're going to be misled. We're going to be mistreated. We're going to be talked about. Amen. If we start isolating, amen, and, and, and cutting off everybody that has said something negative about us, we won't have nobody in our circle. Because surely even the ones that are close to you. Hello, husband. Hello, wife. Hello, brother. Hello, sister. You mean to tell me you and your brother ain't never fell out? You and your sister ain't never fell out? You and your husband ain't never had an issue? Ain't, ne ain't never had nothing that, that went on? Even your, you will cut off everybody. But there has to be a place in your heart to forgive. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you'll meet some lonely people that just, they will not forgive. And you'll see them and they'll be by themselves because somebody's going to offend you at some point in time. And you cannot cut off everybody. You've got to have an opportunity. You've got to have enough maturity. This is grown folks business. You've got to have enough in your heart to know how and learn to forgive. Seventy times seven. Tell your neighbor, don't count the number. You've just got to forgive. So whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive them. That your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. If you do not forgive, neither... Lo, whoa, hold on, back up. This is whenever you are standing and praying, if you have anything against anyone. Y'all hearing this? Y'all hear, hearing the same Bible I'm hearing? It says, forgive him that your Father in heaven may also forgive you. Forgive him so that God can forgive you of your trespasses. Because there's some stuff that you're going to do and you're telling me that you can't forgive nobody. Well, what about God forgiving you for the things that you're offending him with in your life? And he makes it real plain. He says, but if you do not forgive, neither will your father in heaven forgive you of your trespasses. If you don't forgive, God can't forgive you. And surely, let's talk about the preacher. I need to be forgiven. I, I need God to forgive me because there are some things that I think that I need God to forgive me from. There are some things that I do that I need God to forgive me of. And I need to repent and know that I'm good with God. Hello, somebody. <laughs> I need to repent and know that I'm good with God. I don't need to be holding stuff over full head and be walking in unforgiveness. Tell your neighbor, get it right. Get it right. We're not going to like everybody. The Bible doesn't tell us we got, you better like everybody. You see, you're not going to like, you're not going to like some folks' voice. You're going to like, they, they don't talk, they talk so much. They, some folks got bad breath. You know, they just, you, it's just things you don't like about certain people. It's going, you're going to have some dislikes, but you can still, with, even with dislikes, you can still show love. You can still Forgive. 
You can forgive. Uh-uh, 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 uh-uh. She's supposed to be saved. Uh-uh, uh-uh. She ain't, that's unforgivable. Is it? Is it? Is it so? Is God gonna put some stuff on you? Gonna tell you there's some stuff you just uh, uh, he just uh, that's just unforgivable. I can't forgive him. We, we don't want that. T- we don't want to get in that type of a competition where we're trying to not forgive folk and then trying to equate what God's going to do. But God says that if we forgive, then He can forgive. Amen. Take heed to yourselves. Your brother and your son, sister, or your brother sins against you, rebuke him, and if he re- repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. This is Luke 17, y'all. This shall remind you is mandatory. It says that if he it says, I repent seven times in one day, we still got to forgive him. We think, ooh, that's hard. That's that's hard. Like he boy. <laughs> like he look. <laughs> hey, you can't keep doing this. You can't keep you can't keep doing this now. Look. It's the same day, man. We just did. I know you ain't forget. I forgave you one time. But like he repenting. And we can't judge that if whether like he well, he's not serious. He I ain't forgiving him. He ain't serious. How do you know? Well, he just did it four times. How do you? But God, the Bible says you still got to repent. You still got to forgive. Woo, this strange teaching. This strange. This, this strange. <laughs> if they're repenting, it's not for you to make the judgment. God makes the judgment. You just got to forgive. Are you going to forgive and still watch your back? <laughs> By golly, sure I am. <laughs> but I've forgiven him in my heart. I'm forgiving him while he keeps slapping me in the back of my head. That's time number seven, Lockheed. Like Look here now. <laughs> I'm sorry, Pastor. I repent. I repent. I just get an itch in my hand and a reflex. And <laughs> Keep. But I've got to forget. I may change some things. I may get behind him. I may move out of the way. I may change some things around. But I've got to forgive him for those offenses. I've got to forgive for those offenses. I've got, I've got to forgive for what he did when he came to my house. I, I've got to forgive for what he said to my, for what she said to my mama. I've got to forgive, amen, what I saw on Facebook. I, I've got to forgive. Getting ready to go home. Sometimes it takes supernatural faith to believe that God will righteously judge the person that hurt us. It takes supernatural faith. This is why it's so so important for us to have a close relationship with God. It's for us to get deeper, for us to mature, because we have to forgive if the expectation is that God is going to forgive us, that we have to forgive. If we're going to watch as people offend us and then hear them repent and then know that God is holding us accountable for forgiving them yet and still, it takes some supernatural faith to believe because I've got to believe that as many times that they've done me wrong, as many times that they've offended me, as many times that they have hurt me, that God is going to handle this. God's going to not, not going to allow this to continue to happen to me. I'm his child. I'm the apple of his eye. I've got to have super, I've got to have faith enough to believe that God is going to righteously judge. This person that has hurt me, it's not, not our job. Amen. Not only trust him, but to also, also to pray for those that have done us harm to pray we've got some deep cuts some deep wounds 
Amen. We've got some stuff that has cut us deep. Amen. And, and, and people don't understand why we act this way or how, how, why we respond this way. We've got some deep stuff that has hurt us. Amen. But we still yet have to learn to forgive. Forgifting is oftentimes misinterpreted as condoning the offense. It's not, it's not that he's okay just slapping my head and it's okay. It's not that I'm condoning the offense. No, 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 no. It's not all right. I mean, it's disrespectful. It's out of order. It, 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 it is assault. He's assaulting me. He's constantly doing. Amen. He, he's a, the offense. It's, it's not. It's not to be misinterpreted that I me, I forgive him. That is, it, it condones what he's done. God can still hold him accountable. God still has to judge him for his actions, but yet he's going to judge me for mine. Have I forgiven? Jesus does this. We don't hold against uh, offense against the person because we've got to be able to believe that they can change. We've got to be able to believe that they can change. We have to be able to believe that they can change. We, we see people go in cycles and do things over and over and over and over again. Well, we've got to forgive them enough and have supernatural faith to believe that God can yet and still turn and break the cycle. They've always been on drugs. They always stole. They, they've always been a liar. They, they, they've always uh, been an abuser. They've always, uh, we've got to have enough faith to believe and trust that God can break any cycle, destroy any cycle, and allow them to live a life that was, is the complete opposite of the lifestyle that they're living now. It is our job to forgive. It release, it doesn't condone, but it releases us to continue to live. Our grace is by God's spirit working in and through them that they have an opportunity to recover once again. We're standing all over the building. This is unforgiveness. Unforgiveness has to be moved out of the way. And forgiveness has to step forward. This has grown as we matured in Christ. That we, we learn that this isn't just for select people. I love, I like them, so I'm gonna forgive them. You know, he's pretty cool. He's, you know, she's she's pretty cool. You know, I, I like her, so I'm gonna forgive her. This applies across the board, like or dislike friend and neighbor, foe. We still have to forgive. We've got to forgive family. We've got to forgive friends. We have to forgive our brothers and our sisters. Because offense is going to come. Hurt is going to happen. But we don't condone the sin, but we forgive the person and allow God to deal with the sin. Grown folks business says that we encourage, we are loving, that we learn how to repent. Amen. And a part of who we are must be the fact that we're able and willing to forgive. I can still forgive you and you're still going to see love still going to see my smile still going to see compassion still going to see joy Your whatever you did to offend me is not going to keep me down to 
stumble, allow it to, I can't allow it to be my stumbling block. I can't allow it to be, amen, the, the foundation of why I say I didn't make it to my next level. I can't allow, amen, what you've done to hinder me from moving forward into what God has called and anointed me to do. I see what you're trying to do, enemy devil, but I forgive you, and I'm continuing to move forward. Every head bow.